Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's your Kiwi Connection here, Kimmo7, and today we're doing a gaming mouse showdown. So this is going to be featuring three mouses, gaming mouses. One is a Razer Death Adder, this is the uh, 2013 uh, Death Adder. We also have the Logitech G502 Proteus Core and the Steel Series Rival. So these mice, gaming mice, are about a hundred dollars New Zealand, um, around there, and obviously it's going to differ from where you are. So that's why I'm featuring these three because they're around the same price point. So what I tend to look for and what I do with the game mouse is I just um, I see what the features are. I'm going to see how comfortable they are to use, uh, how accurate they are in terms of the sensitivity and stuff like that, and how just they feel to like game with the buttons obviously, um, the looks and any additional features it might have and then after I go through all that I can you know give uh, a personal opinion but then with peripherals it's always difficult because everyone's gonna have their own opinion you know everyone has obviously different size hands and and what they like in a mouse so I'm trying to sort of highlight the main things and the main differences between uh, these mice and I'll also give my personal opinion. So let's jump straight into it with the Razer Death Adder 2013. 2013. So the key specs on this is that it features a 6400 DPI sensor, it's 4G optical sensor, has a gold plated USB connector, a SIM foot braided cable. It is 127 millimeters long, 70 millimeters wide, and 44 millimeters tall. And this mouse comes in at 105 grams, so a bit on the lighter side. Um, this doesn't have adjustable weights either, so a lot of people might think this is too light. Um, personally, I think it's still got a bit of weight to it, so it's still good in that uh, sense. So the looks. This has black, obviously, all three of them are black, but it has a pulsing green light over the razor symbol at the back of the mouse, and it also has a constant green uh, light around the scroll wheel. So that looks quite good. It's quite a uh, sort of like understated, more simple design of a gaming mouse out there. And I quite like it. I think it looks good. I think it looks really good. It's just a more yeah, uncomplicated look. Now comfort, it doesn't have that much rubber on it. There's only two bits of uh, smaller bits of rubber down the sides. This is obviously an improvement for anyone who had the previous Death Adder which has no rubber on it at all. Uh, it was just plastic all the way over. So it's a bit of improvement there but I think it's pretty good. Um, I liked it in terms of comfort. My hand never got uh, sore. It's very ergonomic. It fits my hand very well. And uh, and my girlfriend tried it as well. She obviously has much smaller hands than I do. So she liked it too. She thought it was ergonomic. So that was good. I, I really like it in comfort. It's, it really is a comfortable mouse to use, especially over extended periods of time. Now, the accuracy of this, so I find it pretty good. Um, it's it might be a little bit less than some people would like uh, in some situations, but I think it's pretty good. You can with Razer Synapse, you can adjust it how you like, but it's pretty good. I, I found it really accurate to use uh, in most applications and in League of Legends stuff like that. It feels really easy uh, to get used to, so it's quite good. The buttons and scroll wheel. So the left and right mouse buttons are very clicky. They make quite a bit of noise and it makes it easier to hear when you uh, click something. So that's good. Although, you know, some people might not like the, the noise. Uh, the scroll wheel is is perfect. There's no other way to put it. It's not, it's not too hard and it's not too light. It goes through very nicely and it's very grippy. There's uh, rubber on the top and it's just really good. So this is a really good mouse and 
it also has Razer Synapse uh, 2.0, so that means that you can adjust things how you like, and it also saves them to the account, so sort of like saves it to the cloud. Uh, so that means if you, you know, brought your peripherals and were using someone else's computer, you just have to, you know, download uh, Synapse 2.0, load up your account, and then all your settings are there. You don't need to go through and readjust different settings or what you've set the buttons up for. And uh, and on that final note, it also only has uh, two extra buttons, which are these ones are soft, aside from obviously the mouse scroll click, the uh, two buttons on the side there. So yeah, it's it's pretty good. This is I really liked the uh, the Razer Death Adder 2013. Um, I was really impressed by it. So next up we have the Logitech G502 Proteus Core. So this has a ridiculous 12,000 dpi sensor, which as I said in my unboxing, which I probably won't do anymore with mouses because it was just, it was a little boring, you know, there's not that much to cover really. Um, I'd rather just do it all in the review. But yeah, this is ridiculous and I haven't actually uh, heard of a mouse with a sensor as, <laughs> as ridiculous as that. Uh, so yeah, there's obviously ridiculous sensor. Uh, it comes with five 3.9, uh, 3.6 gram weights, which if you open this door at the bottom, you can see them in there. It's also good the way they've structured it. So if you remove uh, weights from certain areas, it won't make the mouse lopsided. So you can just drop some out of the back. And, uh, and that'll work quite nicely. It has 11 programmable buttons, which is more than uh, any of these other mice, any of these other two. So that's uh, good for some people. Depends on the type of games you're playing, uh, as I said in my other review. Um, two of the buttons serve, one is for the mouse scroll wheel, which I'll get to a bit later, and the other is a DPI adjuster, which has, goes through three different DPI settings. As I said, that usually is better for people that play first-person shooters, not so much people that play other games. I mean, it can, I guess it can be useful, um, but yeah, it's generally, eh, I don't know. I get, maybe, maybe some people find it useful. Uh, so the total weight here comes in at 168 grams, which is a lot more than that death adder. Uh, obviously, you can adjust that weight, uh, dropping weights in and out of it. Uh, personally, I left it, I liked it with all the weights in. It just felt quite heavy in the hand, but it felt good. Um, and lengthwise, it comes in at 132 millimeters long, looking at 75 millimeters wide, and uh, just 40 millimeters tall. So looks-wise, it looks like a serious gaming mouse. That's what a lot of people are drawn to with this uh, G502. It looks like it means business when you look at it. It's not a simple design like the Death Adder. It looks a lot more complicated with all the buttons and just the overall design. But a lot of people probably like that. And uh, it just has a single blue constant light of the G symbol for uh, Logitech in the back of the mouse. The uh, mouse scroll wheel doesn't illuminate like the other two. So comfort. This is, you know... Comfort-wise, it's good. It's it's nice and grippy. There's uh, the rubberized sides on it, just like the Death Adder, but there's a lot more rubber. Uh, it doesn't feel too chunky or anything, and uh, it just feels nice. So I'd say comfort-wise, it's very good. Um, grippy and ergonomic. Accuracy, the sensor is just fantastic. There's no other way to put it. It's very accurate, it's so adjustable, and yeah, that's what most people probably buy this mouse for. It's just that ridiculous sensor. It's just so good. So it just totally wins in that department. Buttons and scroll wheel. Okay, so it has a lot of buttons on it. So we see there's these two up by the left mouse click, which I didn't like because sometimes you can accidentally click them instead of the left mouse click, which can get annoying in games. It has three more around this side. The mouse scroll wheel can also click left and right as well as just straight down like normal. And the two other buttons here, the GPI sensor and the mouse scroll wheel button, which is to adjust if you want the free wheel on the mouse scroll or the uh, more clicky, stiffer one. That's the biggest problem with this mouse, is the scroll wheel. 
the free wheel is just too free. That sounds stupid, but it, it spins so easily that you end up, you know, you just want to go down a bit and you go way over. It should still have a little bit of, say, stickiness to it, just, just so it doesn't spin so easily. The problem is, though, is that, you know, that's fine, but we'll just leave it in the clicky mode. The when it's stiff, it's just too hard to turn. It's not rubber, so your finger can slip off it quite easily, and it's very stiff to turn. You're just constantly wanting it to be somewhere in between, just like where the death adder is. It's just not, and it's the most annoying thing on the mouse. Having it be able to switch like that on the top, as opposed to the bottom of the mouse, as the previous ones were, is a big improvement. But it just, it should it shouldn't be so stiff. It's You always want something in between. So that's the biggest drawback of this mouse. And of course some of these button placements are a little bit suspect. But that's the only real downsides. As far as to click and everything else, the, the mouse feels fantastic. So that's the only downside. So I think, yeah, it, it's a good mouse let down. Awesome sensor, great comfort, let down by the buttons and, and especially the scroll wheel. So that's the only downside to an otherwise very, very good mouse. And lastly, we have oh, the Steel Series Rival. So this mouse has a uh, 6500. DPI sensor, so very close to the death adder. The cable isn't braided. I must say the, the G502 was braided as well, so that's good to see. But this one is not. It has large rubber grips on either side. And, uh, and just a, a DPI button on top. Standard sort of scroll wheel there and two extra buttons on the side just like the death adder. So this one comes in at 128 grams, sort of between the other two. Uh, no adjustable weights in this either. It's 45 millimeters uh, tall. Well, I should say it's 133 millimeters long, 70 millimeters wide, and 45 millimeters uh, tall. So looks-wise, it looks pretty good. Um, it, yeah. I think the Death Adder looks better. This split in the mouse uh, comes quite far down compared to the other two. It's, yeah, I think it, it looks okay. Not as good as the other two. Uh, it has the Pulsing Steel Series uh, logo in the back, which pulses uh, orange. And it looks decent. And the uh, uh, mouse scroll wheel pulses orange also. So, yeah, it, it kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks alright. We'll just put it as that. Comfort, I think this is the least comfortable mouse of the lot. It just seems too long, um, even for my big hands. The rubber parts are also too thick. They sort of are a bit chunky. They they come out a bit. They're not flush. Uh, so that wasn't too good. It just doesn't feel that ergonomic. And trying to reach to some of that front button on the side here can be a bit of a stretch, even though I have quite big hands. Um, yeah, it's just not ideal. I just don't think it's very well designed ergonomically. The accuracy and sensitivity, it's pretty good. The mouse is quite accurate. Um, it, I'd say the, the sense is probably right on par with the Death Adder. So obviously that uh, Logitech, the G502, is much better. Uh, but yeah, it was it was about the same. Uh, can't really say as much, but it's it's decent. It's you know it'll be good enough for uh, most people. Now the buttons and the scroll wheel. So the buttons are not as clicky as the Death Adder. They don't feel like it anyway. They're uh, yeah, they just don't feel quite as good uh, to press. And the the scroll wheel. It sort of suffers from the same thing as the uh, Proteus Core. It is grippy. It's got you know rubber on it, so that's that's better. But it's really stiff. I just don't see why they couldn't have got it as good as Logi uh, as uh, Razer. It just feels stiff to turn and not as nice. Um, so yeah, definitely loses out there as well. Uh, it has some cool additional features though. You can print out a 
a nameplate on the rear and attach that of a 3D printer, which would be cool for some people who have a 3D printer or know someone who does. Uh, it also has uh, Steel Series Engine 3, so you can uh, tune how you want the mouse set up and uh, all that stuff, set the, the sensitivity and all that, refine it back. Um, and that's going to round out this one. So, which of these mice do I call uh, king? Now, I have to give it to the Razer Death Adder. Now, that's mainly because, not because it does a lot of things right over the other ones, because obviously that Logitech mouse has the better sensor. It's just it doesn't do anything wrong. Everything's either you know good or really good on it it's just the best all-rounder it does everything very well and that's why this one I think is the best and uh, why I personally would say it's my favorite and the one I would pick um, if I was someone who wanted more programmable buttons or having a really good sensor and you know lots of adjustment for sensitivity was a bigger deal to me then I'd go for the Logitech G502 because it's, you know, and if I wanted weight adjustment, I'd also go for this. It just has more adjustment, so you can go more with the sensitivity tuning, the weight, the programmable buttons. It's just more that kind of mouse. If that's more applicable to the games you play, then definitely go for the Logitech. Would I recommend the Steel Series rival at all? Probably not. Um, Nothing against Steel Series. If I was going to recommend a Steel Series mouse to any of you out there that just want a Steel Series mouse, I'd say go for the Sensei Roar. That is an excellent mouse, um, but more expensive than the, this lot. But that is an absolutely excellent mouse. And if you can get the rubberized one, that feels just so nice in the hand, really grippy, just a really nice mouse. So that's what I'd recommend. But I wouldn't recommend this one, especially over the alternatives. So I hope you enjoy this video. This has been my first gaming mouse review. So uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what I could do in the future. And, uh, and hopefully we might do some more of these at another point. Anyways, I thank you all for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time.